for his family, he died, so it's time to collect the life insurance, right? And this is like, you know, valued at like more than a million bucks. This is 1970. So like six million now. Yeah, or a billion not, or not something nothing. like that. Uh, so all they had to do was collect that money. But there was a hitch. There was a fly in the ointment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't, they didn't quite get that. <laughs> so tragedy would hit the family again 10 years later uh, when another fire would destroy a shack that was, was it owned by the Roberts family? It was, yeah. yeah it was down in Camp Roberts. Anybody here heard about Camp Roberts? Uh, uh, southeast, about three miles southeast of Nashville. Indiana, a uh, little place that's mostly owned by the Roberts family, apparently, and the, the family, uh, and the shack was owned by her nephew. Okay, I, well, I knew somebody and in the family owned it. Yeah, she was staying there rent free. So apparently. the Roberts' shack. Yeah, another Roberts, in the Roberts family building. owned that yes. shack. Yeah, another one burns down. This time, however, there are two bodies. Well, that was loud. Uh, <laughs> the first body was identified as Geneva Roberts, Clarence's wife. And the second body was identified as that of Clarence Roberts. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> no? Ah. Uh. Hi. Hey. 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 What's up? I didn't know we had, we had service up here. Yeah, this is great. awesome. It's great. <laughs> Sorry, I thought everyone. I would do this and use their water instead of my water. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. All right, good. Okay. You guys um, wanted an unedited show, right? Yes. That's, yeah. We're asked for this all the time, so this is what you get. <laughs> Um, so as we said, they, you know, this, this life insurance policy they had tried to collect, the family had, but the insurance company had decided that there were some things wrong that made them not believe that it was going to be Claire, actually be Clarence's body. So Geneva didn't get any of the money. So she was left essentially penniless at that point. Uh, they, you know, had to sell the family home. The cars were repossessed, or I think the brothers that owned them actually took them back for some of those cars. Yeah, one of them was taken back by his creditors. Uh, I talked to a lawyer who knew the, knew the Roberts, and there was, he told me this story about uh, they were in court, and Clarence uh, was being confronted by one of his creditors. And well, suddenly the creditor's lawyer says, Clarence, how did you get here today? And Clarence said, I drove. And the lawyer turned to the judge and said, your Honor, we want that car. And so the judge made Clarence hand over the keys to his Cadillac right there in court. <laughs> and that's how, that's how deep in. Clarence was living beyond his means, way beyond his means. And, and Uber uh, wasn't a thing yet. No. So yeah. And so getting home was not fun. A humiliating moment for poor Clarence Roberts. Yes. Well, and especially for Geneva, because she and the family had been trying to collect on the insurance for now 10 years and hadn't got it. Um, so at this point, she has to take a job. She is working at the Howard Johnson's. I believe she's working in the kitchen washing dishes. Yeah. Uh, or um, baking pies. I've heard that story too. Okay. Uh, her, her children abandoned her. The entire family shunned her. So she was on her own at that point. So we're going to play this one a little fast and loose. Uh, and we're going to try to add to the story as we talk about theories. That doesn't so mean we're going to make stuff up. But well, by we never yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, Maybe no, a little. We wouldn't do that. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm hosting, so we've got some bullet points here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just talk about the high level of what the theories might be, and then we're going to get into it. Sound good? Sounds cool. good. So we need to talk about Clarence. We need to talk about if he died in the first fire or the second fire. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people out there, by the way, who still believe Clarence did die in the first fire. Yep. We yep. need to talk about Clarence and if he set the first fire or the second fire or neither or both. And we need to talk about if he didn't die in the first fire, where did he go? And then we need to talk about Geneva because it seems like she should have known about this, right? You would think. But maybe not. So let's talk about this. Sweet. Uh, first theory would be Clarence died in the first fire. Yeah. This does not have a lot of subscribers. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a really, really good reason. Uh, I don't know if we had talked about the fact that when the body was found, we'd said that, you know, there was no limbs. It's believed that those were burned off. I know, Joe, through your conversations with, was it the prosecutor? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, got a, I, was, I actually was lucky enough to track down a guy named James T. Roberts, who says he's no relation to Clarence, but he was, he was the county prosecutor in 1970 when this happened. He told me there's stories on the internet that somebody actually chopped off the arms and legs from the body and then put it 
in the barn and, and set the fire. But and he you said will see are, where it says there's yeah. like wound or marks on the bones. Yeah, apparently. The, apparently that's not true, according to somebody who was there. And he, he claims to know everything there is to know about this case. <laughs> well, he was the prosecutor. Yeah, he should know everything. <laughs> he should about know. It. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the thing about the body is, yeah, it's got no arms and legs. So theoretically, the fire is so intense that it would have burned them off. There was also talk of a shotgun being found near the body. So it's believed, okay, he set the fire maybe, but he also must have tried to commit suicide by using the weapon on himself. But there was a problem. There was no gunshot wound in the body. Mm. There's an issue. Come on, dude. <laughs> that that <laughs> raised the first red flags for the coroner, yeah. 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 So, uh, I, I guess I really just don't understand even how it plays out that he died in the first fire. Yeah, I guess you would have to say that is Clarence backs the truck up into the barn, lights the barn on fire and with the attempt of then he's going to use the gun on himself. I mean, this, this whole series of events, did that make any sense to anybody else? Because it doesn't to me. No. So that's, that's and what the it's ring, so strange. Right? It was undamaged. If the fire was hot enough to burn his limbs off. That was a bit of a red flag. The ring yeah. on the finger should be damaged, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then the, um, the coroner actually did an autopsy, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, they found out that the body had a huge level of CO, or not CO, uh, carbon monoxide in, in the bloodstream, enough to be fatal. Uh, and yet no evidence of inhalation, smoke inhalation at all. The lungs were all clean and pink. So that was a little bit suspicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what else? Blood mm -hmm. type? Oh, uh, there was a blood type. Yeah, they, that didn't match. And then uh, they found one tooth, and that didn't really match Clarence either. It was also, wasn't it missing a kidney or? Uh, I heard that in one place. I'm not going to totally swear by that one, but supposedly the body was missing a kidney, and, and Clarence had both his kidneys. Yep. Yeah. So no, if it I wasn't was. Clarence's body dead in the barn, well, who, who was been? it? Yeah. Do you want to talk about the vagrant? I can talk about the vagrants. Talk about the talk vagrants. about vagrants all the time. <laughs> so there was there, there's two versions of this story, but it is said that Clarence met a vagrant uh, a town away, right, Joe? It was not it was not actually in the yeah. town he lived in. No, the town no Clarence Northern. would not be that dumb. Uh, he was still dumb, but yeah, he didn't quite. Yeah. Okay, so there is a vagrant, and either Clarence met him in a bar and poured so much liquor into him that that when they walked out, the guy started falling down and Clarence said, I'm going to take him to get help. Or the other version of the story is that Clarence met this vagrant. He collapsed on the street having some sort of medical condition. And Clarence says, I'll get my car. I'll take him to a doctor. There's no record of Clarence ever showing up in front of any doctor with this man. Mm. So there's, there's the big red first red flag about the vagrant. Oh, the vagrant also, by the way, was, uh, according to witnesses, had a brown plaid shirt on. Mm hmm Aye. And then the, it turns out that the... Um, what, the why is the brown shirt important? The brown shirt's important? Yeah, why is that important? Why is that? Well, I will tell you why. <laughs> 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 the, uh, the body was, even though it was badly burned, it was laying against the, 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 laying against the pavement and... The so, dirt? Uh, uh, or the dirt. I don't, actually don't know. Was that a dirt floor in there or a paved mm -hmm. floor? Ah, we don't care. Uh, we'll just assume it was something or the other. But uh, uh, we'll just call it the floor. Yeah, apparently it got enough heat protection that uh, a fragment of the shirt actually survived the fire. It turns out it was brown plaid. Clarence's cousin had stopped by to visit him like about 15 minutes before the fire actually broke out, and he said that Clarence was wearing a blue shirt, not a brown plaid shirt. So, well, that that looked a little funny to the authorities. And so people, even though Clarence's family was swearing, and actually one pathologist was pretty sure it was Clarence also. But, the, but that maybe seems really wrong. Well, it does, because, I mean, after, after all, I mean, how do you gas yourself and then start a fire? I mean, how do you do that exactly? Mm, I don't know, because, he should have, because the body should have succumbed totally to inhala smoke inhalation, or excuse me, CO2. Not carbon even monoxide? Other. Carbon monoxide, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you people are making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Everybody just close your eyes. Turn around. <laughs> Everybody look that way. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're pretty sure that Clarence did not die in that first fire, right? Yeah, everybody's yeah. pretty sure, except yeah. for a few people. Like I said, his son's... Uh, 
still contend, at least most of his sons, his family, they, they have a grave, actually, I think with the original corpse buried in it and marked with it marked Clarence Roberts. Yeah, so well, they're, they're $6 contending. million dollars lighter since it wasn't. Well, so. not lighter, but, you know, they're not, well, okay. you know, they're not, they're not $6 million heavier than so, they would have preferred. Uh, do you think Geneva knew that it wasn't Clarence? You know, Do you I, think she I, was in on it from the beginning? I, you know, I was kind of thinking it was Geneva, uh, although I, when I talked to James Roberts about it, uh, again, he was the one, uh, more than me and more than the Internet, who actually knew these two. Uh, and he, she was actually very sure that Geneva was not involved in any of this scheme. Uh, because well, the first one. At, at least in the beginning. Uh, at some point, of course, it appears that Clarence did come back to town. He, he actually absconded with a fair amount of cash, and uh, at some point he must have run out of money, is the thinking, and he came back to Geneva. She let, she took him back in, and at that point, of course, she becomes complicit, because I didn't mention that there was a grand jury in 1975 that indicted Clarence on charges of kidnapping and murder for the murder of this vagrant. And so he was a wanted man. The police were actually, local police were looking for her. They were staking out Geneva's home from time to time. Uh, so at that point, she became complicit, but he's very sure that she was not actually part of the conspiracy at, at the begin beginning. With. Right. Yeah. So Clarence would have then placed the ring himself? Probably Clarence put it in there himself, came back after the fire was done. And after the volunteer firefighters left for the night? Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Clever. Clarence may not have been as smart as he thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <I> think, <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that, that screwed Clarence up is that... Um, he had a pickup truck, as I mentioned, that the, the firefighters saved, and he had rigged it up as kind of a rolling gas chamber. He plugged the fire, the tailpipe, and he had taken what appeared to be a hammer and a punch and punched a bunch of holes in the tailpipe. And the firefighters saved the truck from the fire. It was actually inside there. It should have been consumed by the fire, but these vi firefighters show up and they roll the truck out of there and save it. Uh, later on, somebody discovered that a lot of, a lot of carbon monoxide was leaking into the cab of the truck. Uh, and so they, that's when they looked at the tailpipe and discovered it had been punctured all over the place. I think Clarence probably intended for the truck to be consumed in the flames of the fire, but that didn't happen. So you got to ask yourself, what do you, why do you have a little rolling gas chamber? He didn't need it to gas himself inside a closed garage, obviously.